Today, we will build one of the most infamous PC killers of all time. If you've been crushed by it, you know the one that I'm talking about. It's Halloween season, baby. You gotta get out to the craft store. Skulls and bones galore. And also, I build a huge new cavern tile and try my hand at some new techniques to build a grotto for a possible ally in the Tomb of Horrors. Let's get on with it. Hello everyone, Wylock here. Thank you for joining me once again for our No Compromise Tomb of Horrors build. This is part seven. Presumably you know the drill by now, so I'm gonna take you right to the crafting table, but hey, real quick, if you're really digging this series, please feel free to share it on the social media platforms. I am 35 years old. I don't have the time or interest to learn all of them. And on that note, if I don't reply to you, that's why, it's nothing personal. Okay, let's go. And remember that our sponsor is Heroes Horde for you 3D printers out there. Excellent selection, including all True Tiles lines. We left off here in room 21, so going behind the tapestry through the secret door, and then there's some hallways here with some tricks and traps not worth going into. I'm gonna jump right over this big cavern, room 22, the Cavern of Gold and Silver Mists. A thick silver mist shot through with delicate streamers of gold partially blocks your view of the area that lies ahead. Okay, I'm not gonna model mist. But at the center of the cavern is a small grotto in which dwells the fey being Siren. So here I've drawn out a 6x6 grid on some good stock of double corrugated. This is from a TV that I bought. And I'm going to freehand draw on the shape of the cavern and then cut that bad boy out. This is going to be one of the larger tiles I think I've ever made. For the walls, I was originally going to do more of the tin foil rolled up and uh, stacked, but I thought back to the Underdark tiles I did last year. I was really happy with how those came out and they're a lot easier to do, so I figured I'd try that here. Cutting out half inch wide strips of more double corrugated cardboard and then laying a thick bead of hot glue around the perimeter and putting those strips on. Notice the way that I cut it so that the corrugation is open. It can drink in all that hot glue. And you just kind of bend it, force it, bend it to your will so that it sticks around the perimeter there. This is some old school DMG info style right here. Love it. And now again, repeating that technique from the Underdark tiles, laying a thick bead of hot glue along the bottom of the wall and then teasing it upward with the nozzle of the hot glue gun. Kind of giving the illusion of stalactites, or stalagmites, whichever one comes from the ground. So with the walls all textured up with hot glue, got this quarter inch thick cork sheeting, and I'm just gonna hand break pieces that are about one and a quarter inch square. I want them to be irregular, not square, and I've got that grid that I pre-drew on so it should be very easy to hot glue these down and introduce a little chaos by deliberately having some of them overlap their grid line and others undershoot. Makes it look a little more like a craggy cavern floor while still giving you a grid to work with. While I'm at it, I started the grotto. So chipboard, this is graphics medium chipboard. Love this stuff. If you've been watching this series, you know what it is. Links are in the video description below. But I cut out a rough shape as the base and then started stacking hand broken pieces of cork sheeting around the perimeter. Different sizes, different shapes, offsetting each other, sort of like subway bricks and just building up a grotto, having some fun with it. Yeah. Now this assembly is very fragile, very weak. So I slathered it with neat white glue, not diluted. Although a soaked wet brush will help to dilute the glue on the piece and sort of help it get into all the crevices. But I just slathered that full of white glue and set it overnight to dry. And while that was going on, I went about making my hallways. So many hallways. This certainly was in the early days of inefficient dungeon design. Hallways for hallways sake. God, these are annoying. And there's so little reward. But two hour hack session later, I had all the hallways for this section done. Next day, the grotto's good to go, hard as a rock. So I based it in black, overbrushed with a dark gray, and dry brushed with a light gray. Now at this point I realized this isn't a modular piece. It doesn't need to agree with any of the other stuff in my collection. 
Therefore, it's an opportunity to experiment with some stuff, because normally I would stop here. So I took this homemade dark brown wash and just slathered it all over, and then took some blue wash and dabbed on a few spots. This looked really cool while it was wet and I had high hopes, but then when it dried, it was just dark. I may as well have not done anything. So I brought it back up with a little bit of that dark gray and moved on. Actually, as I'm sitting here editing this, that looks pretty darn good, actually. It doesn't look that good in person. Oh well. Laid down a very light gray base coat, because I ran out of white paint, and then hit it with this Vallejo Magic Blue color. Love it, it's a vivid blue. And then some dark scurvy green and some patches to indicate depth. And I'm not worried about overspray onto the rock here. In fact, that's kind of the idea. This is like a magical grotto and maybe it's the water is glowing a little bit up onto the surfaces of the rock. I also went with some plain green and did some random patches and found that this complemented the blue really well. So I put some random spots on the walls as well. Uh, a bunch of these army painter tufts, let's see, um, those are from my orc army, so I think I'm going to go with these light green ones, they're the only other ones I have. Pick a few spots, some of them in the water, some of them creeping out of rocks. And now some clear resin, I love this stuff, 50-50, and then a few drops of green wash, this is army painter green tone, it ended up being three drops total. Mix that up really good and poured. So here's the grotto all done with Siren in place. The end result is a little bit disjointed. It doesn't quite click. I'm not sure what it is. If you have tips, feel free to leave a comment below. I think it has to do with contrast and not having a bright blue in the mix somewhere. Or maybe those tufts are just really out of place. But this was a good little opportunity to try something new and learn things not to do. So good. Getting back to the big cavern tile itself after basing it in black, I just overbrushed with a large brush, a very dark muted brown, followed by a heavy dry brush with a rich chocolatey sort of brown. Then a dry brush with sort of a cinnamon color. And finally a very light touch with this vanilla that I mixed in with the cinnamon. And you can see with a very light touch, it really only catches the edge of the squares and sort of does edge highlighting for you. It's a really nice, easy effect. It takes a little bit of a knack, but in a matter of seconds, you'll master it. Nice, dig it. So going up the hallways, we go north. There's some more tricks and traps I'm not gonna go into in this video. We've made doors and pit traps before. But we come up to room 23. When the doors to the north are opened, sleep gas billows forth from the other side, and then a stone juggernaut, rather like a steamroller, comes out of the 20-foot square room in the north and rolls south. Everything it rolls over is squashed to a pulp, and there is no appeal. Juggernaut. Okay, let's look at the original module for some artwork inspiration, and that's an elephant. Her. I'm not crazy about that, and I don't know how to craft an elephant. You know what? Skulls are badass. Skulls always work. So look at this. This is table scatter for like a Halloween party. I got this at Michael's. It's got some skulls and some bones in it. And I've got these two Gatorade caps and a cardboard tube, which I cut to length and hot glued the caps onto. And a strip of cardstock around the outside to sort of smooth things out, give it a little bit of more depth. For the back wheel, I just imagine it as like a stabilizer. So two standard bottle caps hot glued together and then hot glued to the big roller, just like this. For good measure, super glue on some gears here and using some accelerant spray to stick them on quick so I can move on with the project. From there, with a combination of hot glue and super glue and super glue accelerant, I built up a structure with the bones. 
to kind of tie those two rollers together and give a mounting point for one of these skulls. Because I think if something's rolling down the hallway and it's going to crush you, a giant skull is better than an elephant. At least that's the way I'd prefer to go. Outside for a good spray primer, and then I base coated with a bone color. The rollers I based in a goblin green. This is a lighter green because I intend to use a wash. Remember, if you're going to wash, make sure your base coat is a much brighter color than you think appropriate. Because here we go, I'll apply the green wash and it really dampens it down nicely. Also flesh wash, you could use Agrax Earth Shade Strong Tone, whatever, some sort of dirty wash over all the bones. Painted the big steamroller portion metal, glued in some flat back gemstones to the eyes, and stippled on some Vallejo Gory Red as blood from past victims. Yes. Here is the juggernaut completed. Now that is a device I wouldn't mind dying to elephant what were they thinking so yeah i took a liberty here i know this is supposed to be the no compromise tomb of horrors build but yeah whatever this little package of scatter was two dollars so i'm pretty happy with this little thing so as always let's do a partial setup of our progress so far we left off in room 21 with the tapestries that turn into green slimes and brown molds we go through the secret door, we do some other stuff, we go down the stairs that many of you really seem to geek out on. Here's our intrepid party. And there's a pit trap in the middle of this crossroads. Down at the south end, there's a trick door. Uh, yeah, very cute, kind of just filler. Here's a phasing trap. I don't really know what that means. We go down the hallway and here is our cavern tile with the grotto in it and Siren in her grotto. I love the fact that these two don't match, that they don't look alike. Longtime viewers will know that my goal has never really been realism. My goal is spectacle. And the more color contrast there is between this room and this feature, the more it calls the player's attention to the feature itself. Plus, I just want to do experiment with a new color scheme for a possible future set of new cavern tiles. Anyway, we'll come out of there, we go down the hallway, blah blah blah, through a secret door up here, and finally, we come to Mr. Tons of Fun himself. Now the front roller is exactly two inches wide, that was deliberate, so that it can fit in the hallway, play it, model it as written. And it's right at this point where you say to yourself, ugh, Mondays. So there you have it, folks. It is really starting to come together now. I want to thank you for continuing to take this journey with me. That's another chapter for the books. If you haven't already, make sure you come and find us on Facebook, the Tabletop Crafters Guild, over 35,000 members strong and growing. Also, to all of you who keep giving me suggestions about which iconic module to model next, stop it! I am never doing anything like this project again. Here's some other videos that you might like. I'm Wylock, make things and play games.